Hello and welcome to Dialux Evo 8.1. We're quite proud and happy to present you our latest version at the end of 2018. I'm Michael Imiker and it's quite nice that I can show you some major and some minor new features. First of all, we have had such positive reactions on the way we are importing the JPEG plan that we are using the same method also for the DWG now. Now let's try that out. I'll be opening the DWG. It also works with the DXF, of course, and you will be noticing immediately that we have implemented an assistant for you to go through the import process. In the first step, you'll be defining your origin, which could be here, could be there. So if you would do just this room, why not placing it directly over here? And the X axis is defined by my horizontal line. Now it's about the scale. Just with the JPEGs, it's the same way of doing it. So I'll be defining two points, for example, these two, and insert directly 1 meter 62. And then the scaling will be done automatically. You can see it here, and he has detected that these are meters. If I want to modify now or later, I can do it in this place. For the moment, I'd like to finish it. You probably remember that since EVO 8.0, early 2018, you can immediately draw a new room without drawing the exterior first. So let me do this. I'd like to do the contour of this classroom. And this automatically takes me to the first modification that we've been implementing. This is the definition of the room's use. You know that it's a default that you have the office here. Now we have explicitly said that it's our preset, that this is the default value. To be honest, we'd like you to do this manually so that you're sure that you're really using the right profile here for this project. Now, let's carry on with this project. I'd like to insert some luminaires and standard body first, because I'm proud to show you that we have new two objects that you probably like to insert. We have the frustum of a cone, which could be made finer to up to 64 segments. I use just the drag and drop to show you how it looks like. And we have the hemisphere, which we can insert as well. Well, that doesn't need no explanation, but let's have a look at how luminaires are handled and how they behave. Not luminaires, it's also true for other objects. In the past, there was kind of a hurdle if when you wanted to insert and handle objects that are part of an arrangement and those which are singular. So let me insert these four singular spotlights and then a line of luminaires here, an arrangement of luminaires there. I can find them by using loom search. I can use the rectangular arrangement directly and insert these nine luminaires in this field by changing the number, defining that I want to place them on the outer line. That's this part, nothing new in this place and then an align arrangement from here to there. Three luminaires on the edges. Let's have a look at the light distribution. I have to rotate them. Now, do you remember when you make one click on the luminaire, you have the entire group and a second click gives you access to a single luminaire. But what happens now if I want to, for example, change the position of this, this, and that luminaire? Now I can just make a rectangle around it and select them together, modify them, maneuver them around together. Still, they are part of their original group. What I've shown you here is the same, of course, with other objects and with furniture, whatever you have there. And what you probably also like when you're handling larger lists of luminaires, like I'm currently doing, we have been improving the way Dialux Evo handles it. It's much faster. 
which should help you also with documentation if you have large amounts of luminaires in there. So now, after looking at this first part of it, let's have a look at the second part, which I'd like to show you in a case of a parking lot. I choose to open an older project. This one is at least three or four years old. And since many modifications have happened within Dialogs Evo since then, there is currently the need to recalculate it. I've been told this by the message box that we have at the bottom right of my screen. If you don't like it, you can switch them off in the general setup. But here you have information that could be of interest for you if you have problems, difficulties, or if there's something important with the file itself, then it's going to be told in this place. Now let's have a short look at the building. That's the way it is. And the building itself is split in two different buildings. This one is for the staircases. And I know many people have headaches with the staircases because they want all their luminaires being in a collected output at the documentation where all luminaires from all stories go together. Now, this can be achieved much easier now than in the past. Let's have a look at how we're doing it now. I'm currently looking at building number two and I'm looking at the lowest floor at ground floor and we could either choose the west or the eastern side. Let's pick the west staircase and let's insert some luminaires and we'll be returning to that project over the view to that tree in an instant. You'll probably notice that we improved it in some more significant points. So let me insert three luminaires for this area here. A line arrangement from one side to the other. They're quite big. So I'll pick one and move it upwards. So it could be like this. These three luminaires in the listing of luminaires should be found. That's building one. We're there in building two. And not like in the past, you'll be finding here now the exact name of that luminaire as part of the description. Easier to get there, to find them. You can use the search function. I could go here and find all the luminaires containing the manufacturer's name, for instance, or the model description. So now I have that, these luminaires here, and I can copy them, Control C and Control V. Control C and Control V. I have them twice at the same position. Now let's look at the building. And let's use the side view. So they're currently here and I'll be moving them up. And instead of being recessed, I'd like them to be better visible. Like this. So in the past, it would have been the case that these luminaires would still remain to the ground floor, story one. Now let's have a look at the luminaires where they are now. These luminaires are now part of first floor. That's one floor up. And I have the choice of staircase and floor. Why is that possible? Well, I have been modifying the space. Let's look at the lower story. Usually, you would have this volume here. Let's look at the construction. This volume is usually as high as the room is. And I can override it. So this would be the height of all four floors together, 15.84. One story, or three, or four stories together here. And here, of course, the description. And now I have the choice, if I look at story two, story two contains this volume, including the luminaires, which means that these luminaires are part of this volume as well of the other volume. And I have the choice in this place to decide whether I want them to be collected together with all the other luminaires of the staircase, which would mean at the end, at the documentation, I have all luminaires of the entire staircase, disregarding the fact if they are on floor one, two, three or four. So this is probably very helpful for the documentation. Here, I 
can assign it. By the way, I could assign also uh, the maintenance factor from the staircase differently than from the story, just in case you have this. Now, this should help you a lot. And we have just one small additional thing which belongs to the documentation, which is not only the fact that it's a bit faster now, particularly when you have many luminaires in there, because the handling of luminaires is faster than in the past, we have implemented something simple but helpful for the views. If I do the configuration of the pages and I want to insert existing graphics. Now, to do it quickly, I want to do it with a JPEG. So probably now you remember also how to import a JPEG. What was not possible was to delete these pictures, which will make that list of JPEGs and ray trace that you have becoming maybe very long and extending the size of your project file. Now you can delete it simply by clicking on the X. Sometimes it's simple things that are making the difference. For those being into street lighting, we made some clarifications on the standard of 2015. We made it more clear how this is to be understood. We have specified IMAX is at 70 degrees and above, 80 degrees and above, while previously it just said at 80 degrees. This is the way the rules are to be understood. And there is another point that we want to make clear that the calculation of G classes, luminous intensity classes here, is done surely in line with the rules. But please check for your reference the standards and you'll be finding this information correct as we are calculating it. Last but not least, we have implemented maintenance standards for Japan and we have been improving our translations for Japanese and for Hungarian. Well, you notice there are major and minor optimizations we've done to Dialogs Evil and I hope it will make your work easier, even more successful and you will be enjoying it a lot. Thank you for listening and watching.